Shakir Naik, the controversial Islamist preacher, is wanted here in India for multiple cases in, and also in Bangladesh. Uh, he was there at the opening ceremony of the FIFA World Cup this past Sunday. The MEA has now confirmed that they have raised this issue through diplomatic channels with the government of Qatar. Let me now go across to my colleague Siddhant, who has more details on this. Uh, what exactly did the MEA spokesperson say? And most importantly, what has been Qatar's response to, M uh, to the MEA and the Indian government raising this officially with them? Well, Zakab, uh, uh, since uh, this news has come out that Zakir Naik is going to participate in, in events being organized under the, uh, uh, under the flag of uh, FIFA, uh, you know, there was uh, there was a demand, in fact, on social media, and in fact, uh, uh, various uh, people in, in 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 India have been demanding India to uh, to flag off this issue with Qatar. And in fact, this is perhaps the first time that uh, that confirmation has come from Ministry of External Affairs, uh, uh, External Affairs, while addressing a press conference. The MEA spokesperson has confirmed that uh, that this issue has been raised with Qatar. Through diplomatic channels. Also, uh, it is important, uh, Zaka, if you remember, then uh, Qatar raised issue of Nupur Sharma at the time of Vice President's uh, uh, scheduled visit uh, uh, visit to uh, uh, to Qatar. So, and and Indian government acted on that. So, this is the time, in fact, uh, uh, you know, uh, to uh, to uh, to return the favor on Zakir Naik, and uh, and 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 now we have a confirmation also that uh, India has raised this issue with Qatar through a diplomatic channel. Let's see how uh, Qatar reacts to, uh, to, the, to this demand of the uh, government of India. Back All right, uh, uh, Sidan, thanks very much for that. Let us also play out the soundbite of Arindam Bakshi, the MEA spokesperson, who confirmed that uh, the government of India, through diplomatic channels, has raised this issue of Zakir Naik attending the opening ceremony of the Qatar World Cup with Qatar authorities. Uh, let's just play that out. Uh, And on Zakir Naik, uh, on the issue of the eight um, Indian veterans, uh, Indian you know, citizens who are there, that issue has been raised with Qatar, but I didn't say with the, by the vice president. All right, so this issue has been taken up by the uh, Indian authorities. Now, the latest face-off between the government and the judiciary over the appointment of election commissioners, from saying that the CJI should sit in on the committee appointing election commissioners to now asking for the file of the latest election commissioner, Mr. Arun Goel, to be sent to it. Uh, the Supreme Court seems to be overreaching its brief. After all, will the court allow the executive to be part of the panel that chooses judges? In this case, the Supreme Court, one constitutional body, is weighing on another constitutional body, which is the Election Commission of India. And if judges have a problem with the executive or members of the executive being part of some kind of a commission or a committee, that will have a say in the appointment of judges, then why should a judge be a part of the committee that has a say on the appointment of election commissioners? All of that and more in just a moment, but first, the story. The impartiality of the CC is paramount for ensuring that the election is fair. जब बेंच इस मामले का सुनवाई कर रही थी, उस दौरान ही एक इलेक्शन कमिश्नर का अपॉइंटमेंट हुआ है। All that the Supreme Court has said is now lay down a procedure, make it fair. All right, uh, let's uh, get into the debate. Let's bring in Subhash Jha, advocate, Major General Anil Verma, retired as head of ADR. Ashpreet Singh Kadyal of the Congress Party is joining us. Mohammad Amin is former joint director uh, in the Election Commission of India. Let me start with Subhash Jha. You know, the question that's being asked, Mr. Jha, is why should the judiciary and why should the Supreme Court, which is a constitutional uh, office, why should it weigh in on an appointment in another constitutional uh, body, which is the Election Commission of India, uh, the Supreme Court may have reservations, but uh, one constitutional body interfering in the appointments of another constitutional body, how does that uh, hold merit? Uh, Zaka, you're absolutely right. Uh, we have three organs of uh, democracy. Judiciary is one of them. The other, other two are judiciary and executives. 
and all three of them are independent to each other they, and they should never try to overreach uh, um, one another unless until it is so warranted now but what is happening in this case that we have and in the recent past that we have seen that judiciary has been always trying to overreach uh, the decision making process of the government uh, government now take for example now three decisions three uh, places or three matters in which the supreme court always try to interfere with rafal was one of them uh, then how to handle the situation in during the pandemic is ultimately for the government to decide but we have seen country uh, in all over the states every high court would decide and give issues direction and try to run the government as if they are the part of the government running the government is not for the courts to decide ultimately it is for the government in power in the state or in the center so the supreme okay. court has also been passing order the high courts have also been passing order and the supreme court never said that okay doesn't matter we are the one ultimately when the matter is seized off with us we are the one who will be deciding no no high court will share interfere but we have seen that in in pandemic all the high courts will decide and all the, the, at the same time the supreme court will also issue directions from time to time you know we have the seen irony the matter here, of uh, let me ask mr general anil varma the irony here is there's been this running feud between the supreme court and uh, the government on the appointment of judges and clearly the the judges want quote unquote their turf protected they want no involvement of the executive or any other body to have a say on the appointment of judges why then shouldn't you extend that same argument to a fellow constitutional body like the election commission why should judges have a say in the appointment of election commissioners well <clears throat> zaka we are focusing only on the role of the judges in the appointment this thing but i want to bring you back to the basic points which we had uh, put up in the pil of adr and in that we had quoted article 324 of the uh, constitution of india uh, subsection 2 which says the election commission shall consist of the chief election commissioner and such number of other election commissioners if any as the president may from time to time fix and the appointment of the chief election commissioner and other election commissioners shall please note subject to the provisions of any law made in that behalf by the parliament be made by the president now president presently the appointment of the chief election commissioner and the election commissioner is done solely by the executive 70 years have passed this law has not been made this was this was this was written in the constitution after one professor saxena raised objection to uh, baba bhimrao ambedkar and then he wrote this so why this law has not been made that no but uh, major general and just just, see, a, just uh, a quick it, clarification on that uh yeah. for 70 years we've had election commissioners being appointed uh by the executive right in fact yeah. most appointments in this country happen by the executive and that, and these appointments as i understand the job of the supreme court is to look into decisions and whether uh decisions are actually unconstitutional i mean it's a constitutional court at the end of the day and if it's unconstitutional the job of the court is to act, act as a check and balance and to strike that down in the constitution unless of course the challenge is there were other qualified candidates or seniority was bypassed or whatever there could be other criteria but in this case what is unconstitutional about a routine appointment i mean why is the court getting involved in this zaka all the uh, various committees which have been there, including the law commission mm -hmm. the uh, dinesh goswami commission all of them have recommended the same thing that the election commissioner selection should be a, by a body which comprises of the prime minister leader of the opposition in court this not thing all along this has been now is if i have to tell you after uh, mr zaidi dr mm -hmm. zaidi demoted yeah. office yeah. he is the only one who had four years something of a tenure all the others have had three years and lesser now we are saying there has to be continuity the appointment of the thing you know that is what was said today yeah so uh, why are we having such quick turnovers and especially in the case of the latest appointment when the matter is sub judice the thing is being in the third in the court and 24 hours per se for this appointment all the paperwork is done and that for a weekend 
Okay, so let so me ask Mohammad Amin uh, as former Joint later? Director in the Election Commission of India. In this specific instance, and I know the matter is sub juris, but what the court is trying to understand is while the court was hearing a bunch of decisions on the part of election commissioners, there was a senior bureaucrat, I think it was a secretary level officer, in the day, he is appointed as an election commissioner. So the court is asking, where is your due diligence? Actually, uh, there is uh, like other agencies are uh, and their executives are, our heads are deputed yeah. by the opposition party and the prime minister and the chief justice of India. But in this election commission, what was the routine last time, 70, 70 years, what you telling me, and everybody knows that. There was till date no law is there. And the same procedure has adopted by the earlier governments and this government. There is no ch uh, change. And you see the file of the Mr. Goel, there is uh, no problem in any, in any qualification or any knowledge or any uh, subject of the uh, commission. So what was the so hurry? The I mean, what, what was the, the hurry? There? What was the hurry? You see, there, this election is going on and further we have the uh, other elections. So okay. we have the... Uh, uh, the election commissioner. No, no, but yes. Mr. Amin, the current chief election commissioner this. does not retire, as I understand, at least for a couple of years. Uh, the the body is running out of election commissioner. So, the that, uh, you know, the secretary level officer uh, retires on one day and the very next day his appointment as election commissioner is given. I mean, surely, you know, government appointments that, don't happen that quickly. That government has own power so yes. that's why they did it like uh, hs brahma case i am telling you like hs brahma case he was the charge just for the two months only mm -hmm. in the as uh, the chief election commissioner okay. and before that he was the commissioner so it's a government uh, to decide all the see all other agencies also they don't have their heads but election commission needed now Okay, so Ashmeet Kadyal, again I come back we to the, the, the same point, uh, what, what Subhash Jha and yeah. others are raising is, yeah. uh, the court, A, one constitutional yes. body commenting on the other constitutional body, I don't know how appropriate that is, and more yes. importantly, uh, Ashmeet Kadyal, the larger question is, if the judges are so reluctant to allow any other member, executive or any other member to have a say in the appointment of judges, then why should they have a say in the appointment of election commissioners? One, uh, this is not just uh, any other constitutional body that we are talking about. We are talking about the apex court, the guardian of the constitution. You know, and the Honorable Supreme Court has held that the success of governments have damaged the independence of the election commission. And it was the party that had always asserted that the Supreme Court is possible. We need to change the leg with which we are viewing this, this especially the Bharatiya Janta Party, they say that, you know, it is uh, one constitutional body interfering in another constitutional body. No, it is the job of the Supreme Court to ensure that, uh, that, that uh, there is independence in the functioning of all the institutions of India. It is the job of the Honorable Supreme Court. It is their duty and they will do that. And number two, it is not represented. This major of India, that it, 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 its independence was damaged because election commission of it decides the time of election, the place of election, where a trial is to happen, a real election is to happen, they go throws into question all the elections have happened. Hang on, That is for Supreme but for people no, no, like the... us, but for like us who live by the constitution, we are to abide by it. The Honorable Supreme Court. Says. And number two, I want to ask just one question. Do not know this question. Under, uh, under the uh, Section of Commission Service of the Election Commission Act 1991, it says that the tenure has to be of before, before, before the person becomes 65. As it you know, the Bharatiya Janata Party has been violating the and if the Supreme Court says something about this, you have a problem with that. Now, Bharatiya Janata Party should stop, stop blowing hot and cold at the same time. Okay. They said we should not question the Supreme Court. Now they should stop questioning the Supreme Subhash Court. Subhash Jha, res respond, respond to that. Uh, there, is, there is a provision of law which says that as far as is possible, the uh, appointment of election commissioners should be for a 10 years or if they 
years of age. I don't know any of these years in office. There is a constitution mandate under Article 124A and 124C with regard to NJAC, National Judicial Accountability Commission. Now, what happened to that appointment commission? What happened to that? NJAC was brought to the constitution on 13th of April 2015. And the court. Yes. Was struck down the light speed with six months it was struck down and with the next four months even the review petition was dismissed so look at this lightning speed and what was the arrangement under that the chief justice one and two the senior most judges prime minister and the leader of the opposition were to be in the process of appointing the judges of the high court mm. now, that was struck down on the ground that it is unconstitutional so you have primacy. The, the act gave primacy ultimately to the Supreme Court that Chief Justice most judges of the Supreme Court decide who should be appointed. Is it so not an let, irony? Let, 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 let me ask uh, let, you, you know, o, over, over the last eight years, I don't think any instance has come to the public uh, domain where which shows compromise in the election process. Uh, had that been the case, in court, the Supreme Court you know, had to say about it. Uh, the fact is that there is opposition parties or, or certain people uh, uh, you know, who, who are part of the ecosystem of opposition parties, they are being left out because they are not able to defeat the BJP electorally. Uh, otherwise, why should this even become a talking point? Because this is just a routine appointment of an election commission. Surely, an election commissioner can't have influence over, let's say in this case, uh, you know, Gujarat that's going to polls. Uh, Zaka, I think it is uh, comparing apples and oranges. You can't uh, link the appointment of election commissioners to the winning or losing of elections by a particular party. It is not at all the case. The uh, elections have been conducted in a good manner by the election commissioners. It is not only accepted. But international with voters, eight crores or something. The issue is that uh, the election commission of India should be seen as an independent. Model. I mean, if you see the regulations of the election commission itself, that sent law commission. Now, uh, my fault uh, to the Ministry of Law and Justice. There are so many recommendations. It's just been ignored. They have asked for uh, certain protection of the election commission. They have asked for uh, tenure. Uh, they have just been ignored. Now the question comes, when the campaign is on and the model code of conduct is in vogue, and at that time, when certain important people do certain things, those are not, uh, I mean, I would say they are sort of overlooked by the election commission of India. Whereas when the other parties do something, they're wrapped on the back. So this type of, uh, you know, uh, aberrations should not be there. No, uh, I, I, what I want to know from a general, general, is specific either illegal practice or, or malpractices by political parties, ruling party in this case, which the election commission has not acted upon in the last four, five, six years. Any, any specific instances well, you can... See, four, can five, six years, I won't go... But I can give you a recent example now mm -hmm. that when the model code of conduct is involved, the electoral scheme has been amended. Okay. Again, that the government is empowered to do whatever it feels like. Uh, but the manner in which this amendment has been done, 15 days additional, uh, just before the elections, and elections it will be done this has also been objected to by or for the electoral that too the and the electoral bond case is also is the routine process yes and before the election before the election the model code of discussion parties 
head leaders and then uh, commission has to decide these things and this is a different that is the policy of the election commission regarding the taxes and uh, bonds and i appreciate and we are in abroad we are doing uh, uh, conduct elections we are also situated nationally not in in india we are doing the other things even training and their uh, uh, elections we are going to monitor no, no, no one is questioning us. the conduct of elections, uh, Mr. Mr. Yes. I mean, no one is questioning the conduct of elections, which is what I asked yes. also, can you bring yes. instances where you see yes. no, no, the last no. question, the larger question the Supreme Court is asking is, about independence, about independence only, of sir. election commission. Oh, hey. Listen, uh, till date, there is no as such rule for the appointment, how to appoint. So they have they adopted their own last, like 17 years. The same is adopted right now. And as per urgency of the elections, we have the more elections. So there was a one vacancy. Actually, there is no problem. So this is a routine process. The Ashwin, government but yeah, we have the seen the speak openly about uh, you know judicial yeah. appointments and how the executive yeah. also should have a role there. Is this the Supreme Court's way of uh, giving it back to the executive, or at least uh, uh, seemingly so? Not at all. One hundred percent not. In fact, in fact, may I please see if you pick up the history, you'll see that the central government and the Supreme Court they have always had a little bit of a concern, always brewing. So this is not the issue. The issue is that the Supreme Court, being the guardian of the Constitution, has to ensure it. Of the institutions, it is doing its job. It is doing its duty. The BJP needs to decide. You know because no, sir, Ashwin, I am asking this. Everybody, please give an instance. Please give an instance where you believe the existence of the election commission was compromised. Now, now let this come up in the Supreme Court. It is this. It is just for the Supreme Court to decide, not for people like us to decide. And number two. You know, when whenever the Supreme Court intervenes and it suits the Bhatia Janta Party, then it appreciates... No, no, you made that point. I am asking Court. you, you are that a spokesperson of the answer. leading opposition party yes. in this country, right? I am asking yes. you, please yes. give me one instance where you believe the electoral process was compromised in the many elections that have happened now, in the last now, eight years. Now, answer your, now answer yes. your question, now this, can you or can I decide? Opposition party. Place. It's for the Supreme Court. Sir, I am not asking you to decide on independence or otherwise. I am asking you, I am asking you, please show me one anomaly that the Congress party has seen in, in the in electoral process. Now, now, and in, now, please see. There's a procedure that is established. You know, we are not about procedure. Even for an investigation, it is the police that does it. When it comes to issues like this, uh, it is for the Supreme Court. We cannot do. Itself. Number two, you know, the Look, Bharti from Bharti, whatever whenever, I have, whenever, what, from whenever, whenever I have followed, no, once again, once again, yeah, from whatever I have followed, there have been instances of, you know, vote intimidation or violence, which is, which has been, give me, give me, give me seconds, which has been, which has been, which has been routinely, you know, back to the violence, politics from time to time, petition the election commission about this. Now, my point is, no, no, my, my point is, does that print such a big charge in the process itself? The electoral process is being compromised in India. Now, now here's I don't the answer. So. Here's the answer. Here's the answer. In, in seven years, in seven years, the commissioners have there is a provision that ensures at least a six years tenure or before 65. No, no nobody has been removed from office. Hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Nobody, nobody. No other election. Please have you made that wrong. I I actually in statement to my viewers because no election commissioner has been removed from office other than Mr. Lavasa's case, which of course I'm not getting into. It's a separate matter. No election commissioner. Removed from office. Mr. Lavasa has the foreign assignment. 
and he has himself anyway thank you very much ashpreet uh, say a closing comment is, is is very simply this that in this case uh, I, it's it's my humble view that the honorable supreme court is overreaching its brief it could have you know question marks over the process or the appointment of one individual election governor Constitutionality point. You can go into the constitutionality of a law, whether it uh, holds up to the constitution or not. In the appointment of an individual, unless of course it's challenged by somebody who is uh, to challenge that. But in this case, over an appointment. to move a constitutional court and for the court to weigh in questioning the independence of the process i think it's uh, it's it's overreach we we'll leave it at that uh the entry of women in the jama mosque was revoked with the request that visitors respect and maintain the city make the mosque and the sentiments all be respected all right uh, on the comment will be drawn what the office of it categorically is that he has been told that the order has been revoked however only condition which and the request which has come in from the shahi imam is that the sanctity of the mosque must be respected all right we hope we leave it at that uh, this was a controversy of notification uh, you can see that uh, in the walls of the that women if they are alone and not accompanied by a male friend or member uh, will not be allowed into the masjid now uh, i am there to speaking to the lg of this they are ready to revoke this order we leave it at that uh, so much a uh, moment joining you knowledge that minister is getting type treatment weapon misuse is in play for the military and of course the economy. of appointment was there to hold why guys for your job they say taking appointment shift just a month before arrest they knew also of the nature of abduction and future after Welcome. So and you're watching today. The public after deleting a social Twitter post following a huge clash over her comment that appeared to deride a top army commander's statement, Pakistan Kashmir back with a reference to Let's tell you what Lieutenant General Indra Devedi had said that. orders allowing back back to the saying now even if 
Richa here. Men critical of the government's defense policy. The way she worded this tweet is called insult to It led to 20 million soldiers. Take a look at what has done. It's unfortunate that some to mock the army. Film Kind of uh, attire, see. least three words which are being dragged into a controversy have offended or hurt anyone i apologize and also say that it would sadden me if even unintentionally my words have triggered this feeling in my brothers in a foul way or uh, in fact he she also goes on and actually uh, goes back and talks about the fact that uh, how she has had members uh, who in the family who have been part of the this is what she also goes on to claim in the letter and the apology letter she What we are doing today is opening phone lines. We would actually go ahead and let us what you think about things that have unfolded today. Has Richa Chadda crossed the line? Richa Chadda, might I add, is shooting for a film Girls Will Be Girls in Dehradun at the moment and she would not be joining us in this discussion. Maybe she realizes that she has. But uh, before I go ahead and open this, my guest after the broadcast, one of the prominent actors of the Hindi at Richard and he has put out this tweet that is hurtful to see what has been written by Richard and he also further goes on to say that nothing ever make us to the prominent voice of the Hindu ministry of the Indian ministry who had while we were ready not many voices from the ministry ready to join us they keep us whatever said and done I mean talking about let me take this to my that there is one important story about Yes, this is uh, Akshay, who's always focused on the uh, issue, and he's also uh, many times gone up there and met with our Jawan, and uh, he's uh, taken social media just to clarify uh, that point we ever in taking any just towards uh, in fact, uh, and uh, a screen initial post up because he is somebody who is very confrontational. He mm. is known to be somebody who is patriotic, honest, about was created by his passion, which is, uh, you know, he, he does like talking about these uh, nationalist issues, patriotism, and especially uh, talking about our soldiers. And I think he has, uh, you know, he said uh, that our, our soldiers a sacrosanct, and that is the message I feel to give out uh, to the industry, despite uh, the, uh, the original uh, post of uh, that uh, tweet, which is uh, already taken to 
for her policy. Uh, in fact, she said that uh, those three words have been misconstrued, and she also uh, that she is part of the army. But I think it's that she said and posted this. I think most of the that it is uh, something that he feels definitely about rather than something that. chosen to this evening. Colonel Rohit Dev is joining us. Also joining is uh, Shaza Sun and Peter. Pail Singh also joins us today. And political journalist Varun Singh is also with us. Colonel Dev, I'll begin. How did it make you feel when you first read about what Chacha died about? I read it uh, night evening, and uh, I was about to use three words there, mm. different from doing so because uh, of it was. I didn't want to use words. You know, it's better. And then I brought a lot of media houses to avoid this, mm. and uh, and and I felt that it is very full. You know that uh, a citizen of that stature, educated. You can go and see her financial, no, sorry, her educational background. Uh, Stephens, um, you know, prominent actress, celebrity. I don't know her personally, or I have not seen her movies, but mm. you know, that's the way it is with the blue tick on uh, the Twitter as well. You can't be so irresponsible. And my uh, thing about was that it's not irresponsibility because even the apology which has come, which has come through after your channel, you know, casted a lot of things this morning. Uh, while as a veteran, sort of that. Okay. Uh, but uh, it was a policy with a few mm. and I, my policy of quoted her, uh, you know, family to be in the in the armed forces and then try to take that moral ground to that I would never hurt sentiments. I am from third generation myself. There is no way uh, that somebody from my family, even if uh, or she is in the forces directly, mm. uh, would mean force. You know, if you want to get back that decision. Decisions, call the quality. Still, don't come force is down like this. I was just thinking about it coming for this. For that, oh, if she had just replaced that word Galwan with something else by keeping the other two words same on the same tweet, which in which the army commander is, you know, trying to reiterate the capability to take over POK. Mm. Had she just written, say, for example, Z says hi, Z, Z, Z mm. So Z says hi. The phrase Galwan, it's very hurtful because Galwan was not a picnic spot. So you were saying and, that the uh, army would not have, the or the army veterans or uh, people who are part of the Indian army would not have felt offended had she replaced Galwan with uh, Xi Jinping? Is that what yeah, you're saying? Could, Considering she, we are also oh, talking no, I, about I, 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 uh, border skirmishes here. I, I'm just saying if she said Z says hi, hmm. that's a challenge, right? So hmm. we are up for the challenge. Hmm. But Galwan is not a challenge. Galwan is a past of rich historic sacrifice and deed of the men on ground. Okay. That is that is ridiculing the sacrifice. Okay. So you know you can you can say that Pakistan you consider Pakistani army better than the Indian army. That's okay. We we'll take it as a joke. Can't say on the ground. Uh, the and mind you, ninety nine percent of the um, uh, the citizens in India. You know, you don't. Let's not, uh, you know, try to use uh, cheeky uh, phrases uh, just to hawk some limelight and likes and dislikes on a, a social media. Okay. Not part of the social media. Right. Okay. There's a late show in the morning and gentleman from, I think, some hmm. political party hmm. who tried to give it a spin that, you know, satellite imagery is not today. I mean, come on, have a heart. Have those places seen? The entire focus of and the million percent of the last two and years was one of the infrastructure sure. that is now pushing the pedal for you know occupation of Tibet by the Chinese. It's not it's not Indian territory. Okay. And Shazad, I I'd like to bring in uh, Shazad of, for a second, uh, Colonel. Uh, they
Secondly, my heartfelt condolences to all the doctors and the Jawans who have 